All right, and we are live. Welcome everyone to Block Talks. Today's episode is an art of tech in film. I am your host, Crypto Nando. We've got Robin Lamb with us, and today we've got Kim with us. Hey, Kim, how you doing? Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks for joining us. So uh, if, can you please give a brief introduction on yourself so that our viewers know a little bit about you and uh, why you're here? Absolutely. I am the founder of Flow Film Festival and Film Market. Um, I am a Hollywood native, California native. And um, when I started my career, I was down here and I kind of saturated the market and I was like, oh, I need to expand, you know, but this is around the same time that the market here was being drained. Like, like I was part of that brain drain, that talent drain that went to California because we want the opportunity, whatever. Right. So now I've come back, I've started a family here. What I want to do is reinvigorate this industry. Like, there's so much here that we have. I mean, Miami Vice, that's like a classic. It was filmed here. I and mean, we have the opportunity to use the studio as our festival grounds, you know what I'm saying? So it's like crazy. Like we have so many resources here. We need to make sure that on multiple levels, we're attaching the, um, the, the logistical and, and legal matters to be like, hey, we need these incentives, right? But then we also have to provide the space where we can have our talent shine. And if you went to my festival, you get a distribution there, uh, offer. Like you get distribution. Just just come to my festival, you get distribution. And a couple of years from now, you might eligible for an Oscar. So That'd I'm very cool. proud of that. Um, I'm proud of that vision. And I'm, I'm grateful that you guys are, are here to let me hear it. Nice, nice. I'm, I'm excited for Flo. Um, I've definitely heard of it for a little bit, so I'm definitely he interested in hearing more about it. Thank you. Thank you. You know, what I'm interested about is how this um, pandemic is affecting the film industry. How is that affecting you carrying out this festival? So, okay. So, like, um, original market meltdown that happened in 2008, right? Best paying years of my life. Because you can't do anything. What are you going to do? You're going to stay home. You're going to drink. You're going to smoke. And you're going to watch content. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, but you're going to watch content. That's what you're going to do. Like, there's nothing else to do. And it's so weird that in this space, like, you're not, but you're, you're physically restricted. You're physically restricted. You can't go anywhere. You can't see anyone. What are you doing? You're Netflix and chilling all day. Right. So you need the content. The flip side of that, which is very interesting, what Robin's touching on, is that you can't produce. So if you had something that you're planning to shoot for, whether it be 12 people or 1,200 people, it's not happening. Right. Everything is in this space. Everything is in this little box, this space. Everything is here. So it's ironic to me because I was like, oh, man, I'm finally in a space where I don't have to be in front of the camera. <laughs> now I'm back in front of the camera. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> like every time I try to go, they really back in. But it's like I'm I'm comfortable in this space. I'm not uncomfortable. I'm not uncomfortable in this space. But the fact that everything has to be in this space is very frustrating. And then, you know, having the Zoom meetings is great, but I got tired. Like I got I don't do I don't do this. You see this? This is for y'all. <laughs> I don't do that. Makeup? Oh, no, I don't do that. So it was like, like, you know, if you miss meetings and stuff, people are doing makeup on different days. And it's just a whole other thing. Like, I have to be like, okay, I've got to get done up to go online. Like, I have to be in my business clothes to go online. So um, just trying to do that pivot. Plus, like I said before, trying to bring that festival feeling where you really feel like you're connecting with filmmakers, you're connect, you're making this networking thing. You know what I mean? Like that whole thing. How do you bring that field to a virtual world? Even if there's 220,000 people watching, you know, all over the world, there's 20,000 people. How do you connect to those 20,000 people? How do those 20,000 people help you with your next project or, 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 you know, go forward? So it's, it's been interesting. <laughs> To say so, how, so how have you, I know that you're trying to recreate the experience with Flow as a live festival if we were continuing this pandemic onward to late this year. 
how you are how are you going to use technology to recreate this experience obviously there's zoom and stuff like that but how are you personally as a festival and a leader in the festival going to recreate this experience for people so i've seen some of the stuff that other people try to do including like can tribeca even abff is trying to do a virtual even though they push their date back to behind us right mm -hmm. they're still trying to because the reality for me is that if i can create this experience virtually this experience will be more so physically and if i can incorporate the two to where i can upload the physical experience right maybe it's only 20 of us instead of 200 of us you know what i mean if I can yeah. incorporate that into the virtual world where we're actually having a step and repeat and you're actually like seeing celebrities, you know, whatever. If I can incorporate that, it's just going to be much more, much more robust. So the thought process is not, oh, let's pivot digitally and then we just leave the physical thing behind. Mm -hmm. um, the process of pivotal, let's pivot digitally and let's bring that audience in to the physical right so we have a greater audience huge point in my whole thing but then at the same time it's like if we do manage to have a physical thing we can share that virtually so be like if you were here kind of thing you know what i mean like mm. yeah there's only six people out in this audience in this theater but like if you were here you could point at the six you know <laughs> So it's that kind of reminds me of uh the travis scott Fortnite uh, concert i don't know if you heard about that uh, i heard about it yeah, yeah, so he did it in virtually. It was basically a giant dude in the, the, the virtual concert, and he was stepping on people, but the concert was pretty good. Um, I think they ended up raising like $20 million for it. I think there is an appetite for a virtual festival uh, with some experience where it's in person, like you said before, especially uh, if they could do it just literally, I think it was a couple of weeks back. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, your conference could provide the same type of value for it considering that there is an appetite. I don't think the pandemic is going away anytime soon. Uh, I think uh, even if it does wane, there's still some people prefer to stay inside and people are realizing that maybe it's not necessary to do my job you know, in person. I can just telework or telecommunicate uh, with people. So yeah, I think it's a big possibility. So. The other thing I think is really great about it is like, because you know, you're going virtual and then you have the opportunity to pioneer. You know what I mean? Like, this is how I want my festival to run. What do I have to do to make it run this way? And it's not the same as Cannes Market. It is not the same as Tribeca. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not streaming everything off of Netflix or YouTube. Like, I need to build a platform that does these little things. So that's when tech really comes heavily into it. Because here's another question. Let's say I do have a platform. And I can build a platform that can host our... our, our um, are the, the movies that we're, we're screening, right? So like we're hosting that data already, but we can interact also with Zoom and have like a Q and A, right? And be able to flip between people, but then we can also interact with Vimeo and be able to do a whole workshop or panel. Like it's not a Q and A, like it's a whole presentation. You know what I mean? Like if we can build a platform that does all those things, and then on top of that, because I'm a mad scientist, add a VR element because gamers, you see what I'm saying? Like it's a whole other thing. And then what you were talking before, which probably most people don't know that I'm, I'm very involved with both of these individuals. And one of the things they wanted to do is ha having a comp, we were having a conference, they'll fill you on that, but to have magically there to where you can interact physically with items in a 3D space, you know what I'm saying? That's you have a, you, like, it's just, like, seriously, like, there's so many possibilities that I can't afford any of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I do want to give a shout out to Priscilla, who is looking forward to the festival in South Florida supporting you, Kim. So, Priscilla, thank, thank you, you for Priscilla. watching. Thank you, Priscilla. Priscilla's and, uh, an amazing individual. She does conflict resolution and, um, She's very well connected, and I'm I'm grateful to have her commentary. Thank you for joining us, Priscilla, and uh, and actually probably joined us too when you introduced yourself. Uh, you said Ho West Hollywood West meets Hollywood East, and at first I, I my first question was like, there's a difference between Hollywood East and Hollywood West, and and he clarified 
it, one's Hollywood, California, the other one's Hollywood, Florida. So um, definitely thank you for that clarification. I, I was not- There's miles to, between us, okay? Like 3,000, there's miles. <laughs> Say, be grateful. You don't want to, you know, yeah. keto at your door, but yeah, no, grateful. And probably is amazing, and he's the one who does um, the VR and AR. And I've been talking to him um, for the benefit of everybody who's watching or anybody who's involved. Stop it, Nando. Um, <laughs> that you know, he's a, he's a pioneer in this industry as well. So he's a really good resource. And you know, if you're on here and you need someone that's got that capability and has that forethought. He's an excellent individual. Right. I mean, what we've seen from our events that, and some events that we really transition is that uh, to get that really good engagement, uh, obviously you can't charge as much or the pricing will be different versus virtual and in person, right? What we found that was very useful, at least from a lot of events that we attended in our own events, is that we live stream everything for free. But if you want that engagement with the speakers and the VIP guests and the celebrities, you pay a little bit extra for going to the Zoom chat and so that if not, you can just go to the Facebook link or YouTube link live and just watch it. I think that's something that's a very potential, a good idea for you guys to do uh, a split in services. Because um, I don't know if people, because it's also going to be a hard time because it is US uh, economic recession coming soon. But however, I think uh, having an differentiating value for people is probably a good approach especially if you can engage people people are willing to pay more right and people who don't want to pay they're never going to pay in the first place right they're going to somehow get into the, the, the film festival for free or something like that and if it was in person so those, those kind of people always exist i think uh what you should be targeting is people who are willing to pay extra for that value that experience like you mentioned before and i think using technology to do it is probably a good way to I'm of yeah, one mind with you because, like, honestly, like, my biggest thing now is, like, in a physical event, I had a lot of control. Like, I, I know people. I, I can set up stuff that would look really good. You know what I mean? Um, the effect of taking it virtual has been the challenge. And, and to me right now, it's like, how do I add value to my festival? You know what I mean? So I have a panel. Do they have a master class? You know what I mean? Or, or is somebody willing to create one? Or somebody willing to webinar? You know what I mean? And, and this is stuff that can be utilized year-round. It doesn't have to be restricted to our festival. Maybe our festival is the live option, but everything else is pre-recorded and disseminated material. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's just changed my whole... The synapses in my brain are, like, firing totally different. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been a double-edged sword for events. So it's been interesting, right? Because folks... Folks will tell you they don't go to events to watch the speakers. They go to the events to network and they want to connect with people. But if you call someone or if you try and connect to someone during a Zoom session, they're not going to pick up the phone or try to connect with you because I'm not dressed. I'm not ready to be all up in here with someone, you know, like I, I, I need that buffer. And, and I, I wasn't expecting to talk to someone right now because right now I'm in my drawers and I'm home and I'm having a time. And, Nobody knows that because I'm wearing a cool shirt. So, like, it, it's been definitely interesting. Um, it, it's got its pros and its cons. You know, it's it's pros, obvious. You can get to more viewers. You can have more participants. And the cost to do things is substantially cheaper because you don't have to buy or rent the location. But on the negative side, how do you really provide that value to the viewer? Because you're going to push out content that – they can either watch later or it it may not it may not grab their attention long enough. Um, I've personally found myself doing events slightly shorter and doing online events shorter, but more frequently. So instead of one three hour session, maybe three one hour sessions. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, I agree with that. In in the, the thing. What was that? Uh, not <laughs> short form uh, media right now is very popular for promotion, but uh, I think uh, what I'm really curious about, like Fernando said, is that how are your competitors in film and festival adapting? You, met, you mentioned a couple before. What are they doing? Like some of them So are we oh, have um, like five committed distributors, and. One of our distributors is the only independent film distributor that's left because of this whole 
scenario, right? They provide um, physical copy. They provide Netflix, Hulu streaming. They provide in-flight entertainment. They have like, they're so broad and there's so much content being requested right now that they're good. And I've seen things like Quibi, um, you know, other really like under five or 10 minute video sites, which is actually to our benefit because we have a lot of short free. I mean, and, and these distributors entertain those those platforms. Um, so I'm not at a loss to offer a 10 minute short film a deal. It just doesn't exist. I, you know what I mean? Like we're, we're pretty well covered, especially since, like I said, we have one of the few, well, the one that's still standing. And um, I think it's Swami, Shami, S-H-A-M-I Media. It's on our website, which I put in the comments, but um. Yeah, he's the one independent distributor that's not having a problem. They're working from home. They're getting stuff done. Um, the other thing I was considering, is anybody have knowledge on this, feel free to chime in because I have to look it up. And if I don't have to look it up, it'll be because of you. Um, <laughs> well, while you're looking that up, I will mention that I did do some research on the Tribeca Film Festival, and it's actually being hosted by YouTube. So... So you know, here goes back to my point. Here goes back to my point. So this year, now keep in mind, we talked about this ages ago. People, you, you may not know if you don't know me and you don't know us. Um, eventually, I want my festival to be a, come an Oscar qualifying festival. Like it should be a festival where Oscar, which has the opportunity to be screened at the Oscars. I can submit films and they'll potentially screen them. The one thing I've noticed for this year because of the whole Corona thing yeah. is that they're not just allowing festivals that are Oscar qualifiers to qualify. They're allowing streaming services to do it too. We host all our own material. So how can I get my filmmaker, how can I get one of my filmmakers in for consideration? Because I got one short animated that will put us on the map. So how do I do that? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that much about the film industry in general, but what's the difference between having an online person nominate or an online platform for nominations versus an in person? Uh, there's no difference. There's no difference in the medium. There's no difference in the medium. The difference is, is because as a okay, so for the Oscars, you'd have to be an established film festival for seven years before you can yeah. even apply, wow. and then they can still turn you down. Right, but this year they're just opening it up to streaming services. So Netflix, Hulu, Vimeo, all these services are fully able to submit content for consideration. That's a we do they have post a all our content. Video? Technically, we're a streaming tech, very technical, very technical. We're a streaming service. But how do I get one of our films into the Oscars so I can tell my filmmakers you're eligible, and that will automate the entire process? Yeah, that's that's that everybody wants an Oscar. That's what everybody wants. Like they don't mind my gift and like distribution, but they want an Oscar. If they can get an Oscar, they want an Oscar. Who doesn't want an Oscar? So, I want have an Oscar. you have you had a film that has made it to the Oscars in the past? I know people that have. Got you. So yeah, I would I'm definitely, not amongst them. Yeah. I would my definitely start that route. Things. I would start that route and kind of see exactly how they manage to get there, right? Well, yeah, but they have to have some kind of like waiver right like because if even if you're going to accept streaming services like are you going to do a seven-year moratorium on them too and they haven't even applied like i'll apply yeah, they're, they're lowering down the expectations and standards because it's just it's because they're accepting is, offers from streaming services and already lowered their standards and expectations dude i don't know <laughs> I'm not really a live streamer or um, in the film industry, so I wouldn't know, you know. But I, clearly, there's a difference in equipment-wise, that's for sure, and the quality of the equipment reflects on that. But uh, why do you think they're doing that? Is it because of the pandemic? Because, or? because there's no way to have the festivals. We can't have the festivals. So well, okay. the qualifiers, like um, Tribeca can't run. Cannes is not running. They're just doing their market. You know what I mean? Like, they're not running. So who are they selecting to submit? Like there's no, the way they do judging is very different from the way we do. Like you can judge virtually for our festival. 
right? Because I want to include so many different people from different places. You have to physically be here. Like the festival I used to work at, you had to physically be there to judge during the festival time. The festival's going on, you're physically there watching selection, judging. Like that was it. We can't do that. You got to do it all virtually anyway. Yeah. Break it up in do the bite size pieces. Is, uh, do you think this is the future of film festivals then? I I don't know that, but what I do know, <laughs> what I do yeah. know, okay, if what I have in my head, I can get on this screen, it's, 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 it's a template. It's a template. You, you know, know what, what I mean? I think. If you want to plug and play, really we can do that. <laughs> I mean, I think you're right uh, of a lot of things, mostly because I don't really know anything about film festival. But if I were to you know, you know hypothesize, conjecture, you know, I think what the, this pandemic is doing is accelerating technologies that would have taken longer to be adopted. Same thing you see in 2008 and 2009 recession. A lot of social media companies blew up because that's what people were doing. And then enough, people had nothing else to do. So that fueled the need and the acceleration of these technologies. And I think that's going to happen in the film industry during this time. It's going to accelerate things that were bound to happen in 10 years, but now it's going to happen in two or three or five years. So, Absolutely. I agree with that totally. You know, and the good thing about it is that we have to pioneer. You know what I mean? Because this is uncharted territory. So either you're going to fall into the, what's this platform? Steam Yard platform, or you're going to fall into the HIO platform, or you're going to create a platform that's going to facilitate your needs, right? that neither of those can offer. And then you offer that. Yeah, and, and again, uh, whoops. A couple comments that have came up here. So networking during live stream is key to people's, keeping people's attention in this era of Zoom micro attention. I think keeping somebody's attention for more than 30 minutes is huge. Um, usually when I live stream, the only way I can keep somebody's attention for 30 minutes is if they have a question and they're waiting for me to stop talking so they can ask their question. That's usually the best way to keep someone's attention, uh, especially on a Zoom call. Uh, another challenge, being able to translate the glamour and excitement of attending a festival in person. Online. I 100% I agree. Um, I, I've, I've tried different platforms. We're using StreamYard reviews, YouTube, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. Instagram's a big one just because there's so many followers on Instagram. Uh, hi, as you mentioned earlier, even somewhat TikTok, but we won't get into that. Uh, not with this guy. And um, <laughs> <laughs> that guy. You got it right. You got it right. Um, but I, 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 I've seen a lot of different platforms doing a lot of different things. I don't see a lot of them doing the same things. They all have maybe 10% of what you're looking for. Nobody has 100% of, not even half of what you get through a live event. I'd love to be able to go into a, a, a virtual event and just engage with someone just walk up to someone and, and know that I want to talk to them. Like I go to an event and I see someone in a suit and a tie, or I see someone talking to a certain person and I'll say, I, I think I want to meet that person, but I don't get that from a virtual event. Everyone has a picture of them that you know, when they were 15 and they don't even look like their picture anymore. You call them on the phone and, and they have long hair now and they have like 40. <laughs> and, who, who is this person? Did you just, Catfishing. Yeah, I think so. So, like, it, it's it's definitely been weird. You don't know who you want to engage with. I personally have thrown out a couple ideas, which I'm not going to say now because I'm, I'm keeping my ideas nice and tight before anyone starts steal, stealing them and making different platforms. But we can definitely collaborate. That we can offline. use. That we can actually use. That we can yes. actually use. You're saving those. Okay. Yes. Sure. Yes. All the things that we can use, I, I definitely want to save. I don't want folks to use it without us, right? But I, I, I feel like we've got to create an area to where, where people can come in and connect. And, and probably, again, thank you for mentioning this. It, it's easier to get celebrities now. There's a lot of apps now that you can use to, to purchase, rent, or borrow celebrities to mention things online. It's been used a lot recently with Akon. And, yeah. and um, there's a lot of things that are making it Harder to do your day-to-day, -day, but easier 
to generate revenue uh, from a celebrity perspective. So I may not be able to do movies anymore, but I could charge $500 for a five second video to say, hey, everyone follow um, such and such because he's cool, right? And okay, well think about paying. that and have that same celebrity who's willing to do the five minute or one minute little clip, right? Do a three day webinar, free taped. Right. And then sell it for them. Right. Sell for them as part of your package for your event. Sell for them offside as just a thing, you know, like um, script writing masterclass, or you know, um, that's when I have I have a um, guy who's doing wuzu, which is like a martial art. You now create a webinar, create a series, right? We give away this little clip thing for free. I figure out how to produce that monetary recycling subscription. And then we just push it up. There. Like that's right. what I'm doing right now. I'm like, okay, well, flow. Like it, it can no longer be a, a five day event. Like it's not going to generate the income needed to repeat it. I was willing to put a lot into it, but needed to repeat it. It's not going to generate. I don't. It could. Don't get me wrong. But this is the first year going digital, and it's our first year period. We're I mean, looking at the submissions we have. So like five days now because there's less overhead. All you there is it. less overhead, but there's also this huge pivot to doing advertising and sales and connectivity in a way I was not prepared to do. Yeah, yeah, I just wasn't prepared. Of course. So that's why 100%. I have you guys. A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm never prepared for anything like this, right? But I think it's a great time right now to pivot and to really experiment stuff. Worst comes to worst, you can always blame on the pandemic. Say, oh, you know, it was a good event. I know. The pandemic. <laughs> it was but, COVID. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is definitely the point in time where you. Like, a lot of things. Oh, yeah, you know, the technology, I, the Wi Fi is bad, you know, but actually it's just a bad event. I know. <laughs> I, I said I'm a freaking dinosaur and I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely a point where you can try out the waters, you can test a lot of new things. Um, the barrier to entry is a lot cheaper now, so you can you can do something like this, like we're doing now from our phone. You yeah. can use Zoom. Well, I love what you guys are doing. Like Do I, I, I remember it at all. I mean, uh, because uh, think of when you sit, meet someone in person, you're more likely to remember something. It's over digital. You have a very low retention of that information. People right. are just gonna remember the feeling, the experiences, it's just like most things in life. But in digital, it just if it feels and it sounds good, people will remember a lot better. You don't remember exactly what it is because there's so much digital content going around. There's no. That's why I'm so in, engaged in the, the um, VR and, and then the AR because if you're already communicating with the gamer community, right? Which they're immersed. They're immersed in these games, these concerts, these whatever they're watching, Fortnite, you know what I mean? Like they're immersed. If, you, if I can immerse them in this festival, I can get the public at large. I just got to figure out the master plan. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of people doing VR events. There's actually one tomorrow night. Uh, Bits and Tokens is hosting a VR game night. Uh, I know that there's a having event coming up almost every day over the next couple of days because everyone wants to talk about We're the having. We'll talk about it next week about it. Yes, we will. Um, definitely not going to talk about it now, but it's definitely going to be a good one. And oh, got one question for you, Robin. Everyone wants to know: Did you, did you cut your own hair, or yeah, I cut my own what's hair. going on here? <laughs> we cut my own me. hair since uh, college. Except the one time I went to Fernando to get a haircut at his barber. That was very interesting. Uh, that, was, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> he has not looked that good since. <laughs> Fernando, I need a cut, bro. I need a fresh cut. What's going on? Help us with yeah. the Hello. When, when have you seen me with a beard? I mean, <laughs> I thought I was taped up. I wasn't realized it was just like wild growth. No, no, no. You know, See, you I are. didn't have to do it. You make yeah. a great Sasquatch. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I mean, get on top of it. What? I mean, I don't know how your festival is going to work in general. I think it wouldn't be easier now to get a lot more uh, people, like people in film, to be at your festival because it's virtual. 
So they don't really have any excuse to say, hey, I can't really fly there. Long time. Do have more free time, like probably said, uh, celebrities, uh, new artists that are up and rising uh, in general. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And like, yeah, this is a great time. And, and keep in mind, yeah. it's also like what you said, it's, it's more cost effective because now it's like I can have X individual, right? I don't have to bring them here with their mom and their kid on first class and they don't put them at the hotel. Like it is more cost effective money, but I put my costs at the height. Like I, I planned it. I was like, it, it, if I can get half of this, we can have an okay fat. But I went for the, the jugular and that's just what I do. Um, with what we have right now, we can have an okay fest, but I don't want an okay fest. And I definitely don't want an okay virtual. I want a robust virtual festival. So all the I've got a, a, a list, my the length of my arm of people I've already contacted about trying to put these little things together or to trying to be part of the festival. So yeah, we've absolutely made strides. We've got great strides in that direction as far as you know, who wants to be a part of it, who wants to contribute to it, both locals and my, my folks in Hollywood. You know what I mean? We're, we're doing well in that arena. I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Okay. Thankfully. And, and then, and Robin, I think you're getting a little bit of feedback on your side, just a quick FYI. Um, Tim, so uh, right about the 30 minute mark, we'll probably wrap up around 40, 45 minutes just to let you know for our viewers, if you've got any questions, make sure to drop them in there. Um, so what are the next steps for the Flow Festival? So you have an idea of what your event's going to be, what you want to pull from it, who, what kind of film videos you're going to be receiving. Is it a matter of you getting more videos and, and watching them and rating them? Um, are you going to maybe potentially put the voting online where since now everyone can watch videos, you can like videos. Well, yes, and yeah. Um, sorry. I'm just thinking out loud. Um, <laughs> we are in a situation right now where I'm continuing to get funding. We did get some funding, which was awesome. Um, we we're eligible for some more. Um, got we got the relief. Disbursement. Oh, okay. oh, okay. I <laughs> Dude, we got less of it for our private company. We got for flow. I was like, um, so we got some relief funding. I put it in the group. Um, it hasn't been spent, obviously, because we don't know where we're going to spend it. Right now, it's about me trying to figure out uh, these advertising method. Not advertising that you guys, like, ultimately, you will take over. Um, but, like, creating the funnels for the advertising, like, you know, for submissions or whether it be for, for, for tickets and what ticket pricing uh -huh. is and what the passes pricing is and who can get replay and that all that stuff. And then yeah. it's mostly finding the platform. And if we can't find the platform, which we haven't yet, I haven't checked this one out altogether, but I will. Um, and if this is not optimal, we are going to have to create one and we'll trademark it, patent it, and you can buy it, you know. But we're going to put in that work. And I don't see why not. Honestly, um, as far as other people, I've reached out to you guys about what I need from you. Um, we're trying to beef up our webpage and make sure that that's all succinct. Um, the, uh, trying to put together the uh, LLC. I'm going to be S Corp for the for profit portion because we've decided we need the non profit as well as the for profit. Um, and that's on me. So it's, it's, it's pretty much squared away. Um, right now, what we're doing is building our content. Like we have interviews every week with the directors of selected film, the festival. I have an interview that I have to do coming up. Alex has the interview she has to do coming up. You all are gonna have the interviews that you have to do coming up, but you don't know when. But it's okay. It's at least three weeks out. You know what I mean? Like it, it just has to happen. We have to create this content to be able to maintain this festival and really that's a digital issue to me is like it's no longer we do this for a week and it's over it's no i have to do this all year like i have to be present all the time that's the biggest mental pivot for me it's not like i said oh we're gonna be in miami we're gonna do yacht party we're gonna be at the wilsonian we're gonna be at you know it's not about a pace you place still do yacht party virtual yacht well, well, I mean, yeah. hold on, hold on. You can Dude, go on. If we can have five of us on my yacht, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? It's worth it. 
But I'm just saying, like, if we can interact like a physical festival with the virtual, but the virtual was a priority, which was never the case. So the funds that I was really looking forward to being like, oh, I can pay for that. I can pay for that. <laughs> it's like, no, I can't pay for none of that shit. You got to go over right here. Because yeah. worst case scenario, we only have virtual. Yeah. We only yeah. have virtual. There's, there's a lot of things that people are doing from a virtual perspective that are very similar to, to potentially what we used to do at live events. That networking piece is missing because, well, how do people connect if they're all watching the show? Um, what You're I've in noticed, an app and you have a chat. Chat. Right. Well, so <laughs> quick story. We were we had a, a, an event a couple weeks ago and we were all in a Zoom session and somebody started talking and talking and talking and not in a bad way. It was definitely everyone was very interested in the content, but someone wanted to talk. So it was definitely an awkward moment where, you know, hey, uh, there's other folks that want to talk. Do you mind? You're over your met time, blah, blah, blah. You get that awkward moment. And that was that was like like everyone's attention was definitely on the screen at that point. Like it was not on the chat. Hard to your attention. attention is on the chat. No, 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 like live. So for example, if I'm in a Zoom, uh, for Zoom sessions, usually the person who's the speaking speaker, their video yeah. will pop up. So if I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, you see my face and out of nowhere, somebody just hops in and boom, it's now their face and they're kind of cutting someone off. So it made for good content because everyone wanted to see it. Um, it definitely caught people's attention, but it, I think that we need virtually to find a way for people to interact. Relegate that to the chat, bro. Like you want to talk over everybody? Chat it out. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not, not going to block your chat. I think, I think uh, on Zoom, there's breakout sessions, right? You can break out to different rooms and stuff like that. Yes. I mean, I did. Oh, by the way, so you know, I don't know. Read your WhatsApp. Read your okay. WhatsApp. Yes. So many apps. I don't <laughs> care. No, just you read our. My there's not that much stuff in our group, bro. I know there's a whole bunch of crap on WhatsApp. There's not that. I've really tried to keep our group succinct. Please, I will send it to you again when you download it again because you probably don't have it. But read what's in the WhatsApp. I have given away jewels and you're missing them. Okay, I'll go back and read. I've got because there are board member <laughs> first. They're a board member. No, no. Like digital jewel, like, you know, like uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> I'm going to give you a digital cover in right now. There are no, there are board member perks in that group. That Honestly, you can to. if you're going to do like a, a big OVO update, you should just send an email. That's why I read my email faster than I read text messages, to be honest. Yeah, uh, I do too. So, <laughs> probably has a good comment. Um, let's try thinking having Miami in the name uh, for the festival and help getting celebrities since Miami is a great brand name. That's definitely something that we've been blessed with. Miami has been, well, for me, being born is and it raised in Miami. Miami. If it's all virtual now, <laughs> but our sponsors are all in Miami, so it's all good. Like, oh, okay, I don't have okay. a problem. Maybe, yeah, like, because I because I want it like um, one of the judges this year is from the Miami International Film Fest. Like the director, Jai. He's he's one of the judges. Like I'll announce the I'm not announcing selection committee because I don't need you bothering nobody. But like the judges, once you're selected, like that's what this is. Like we're just bringing the community together. It's not it's not rocket science, man. <laughs> it's just. They Let's all, all work together as a team type <laughs> shit. Like, I'm sorry. I, mean, I don't know anything about event hosting, and we do a lot of event hosting. It's just uh, <laughs> what do we, what I do know is that uh, what we've done in the past has been successful, and we try to improve upon it. That's all I know. Uh, if yeah. you ask me, do you know how to event plan? I like, no. <laughs> but don't you guys host conferences? Yeah. All the time. All the time. Yeah. I have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> hey. Sometimes, sometimes you just gotta, I guess, fake it till you make it, or just it, it. Honestly, if you are passionate about something and you do it with your heart you and do passion, it, sometimes then you just gotta do it. Okay? Yeah, just do it. Just do it. Be passionate about it. Make sure you provide a service that you're gonna love. And there's other people similar that are gonna have a very similar interest or similar taste as you, and eventually it'll catch on. So. Definitely, we're definitely going to keep pushing flow. We definitely want to see an amazing festival virtually and eventually in person. 
For those that are interested in hearing more about the event, feel free to check out the website. It's right here, Flow FFM. So make sure to click, <laughs> click on it. <laughs> I love that, Fernanda. Thank you so much for that. (laughs) And uh, Kim, we are right up on our time. So I wanted to thank you for joining us today. And I hope you stay safe and have a great rest of your day. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Love you. Love you, too. And Robin, keep doing the haircuts. Love them. Uh, For those that are interested in following us, these are our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram handles. And you can catch us live. Today's Thursday, so you can catch us live again on Sunday, followed by Tuesday. Again, thank you for joining us today uh, for Art and Tech and Film. And have a great night, everyone.